take a look at the muscles that act on the abdominal wall. Now there's a total of three layers of muscles that make up your abdominal wall. But of those three layers, there's actually four different muscles. So if we start at the most external layer, so if we're looking out here, this layer right here is going to be showing the external oblique. So now notice the fiber direction, how they're going down. This is your external oblique muscle. The action of the external oblique muscles is two different things you can look at. One thing we can look at is going to be flexion of the vertebral column. So the external obliques can cause flexion of the vertebral column. A second action is compression of the abdominal contents. Now both of these actions are when the external obliques, the, both the right and left, are working together. But if you only have one side working, the right or the left, then you're looking at a little bit more of a lateral bend, kind of like a sideways bend. So we have our external obliques. Compare those external obliques to the internal obliques right here. Now look at the fiber direction. The internal obliques are deeper. They're going to be part of the second or middle layer of muscles. The fibers are running in this direction. So if you follow them through, they're running up towards the midline, the internal oblique. In contrast, the external oblique are running down towards the midline. You can kind of think of these external obliques of having your hands in your pockets. When you put your hands in your pockets, they make that same angle, that same direction of running down towards the midline, external obliques. Here, they're running up internal obliques. Now the internal obliques will have the same actions as the external obliques. If they're working together, you're going to have flexion of the vertebral column as well as compression of the abdominal contents. But you can also get into a little bit of that lateral bending as well. But if we stay with the internal obliques, and stay in that middle layer, we run into this section right here. This is going to be your rectus abdominis. You can see there's four different divisions here. Well, they're here as well, just they're covered by fascia on this side right now. So in total, you'll have a total of eight of these divisions running up. Now, the rectus abdominis for an action is gonna cause flexion of the lumbar vertebrae. So it helps with flexion of the lumbar vertebrae. A lot of times when someone is said to have a six pack, this is what they're referring to. These are the six pack muscles. But for you're saying, hold on, hold on. These are, would be a total of eight here. Well, there would be eight, but the only time you can see all eight is if a person is very fit, has a very low body fat mass. So a lot of times, six packs are what you'll see. So everyone has them. They're always in this middle layer. Now to find the last of the four muscles, the transverse abdominis, we have to look on the inside of the cavity. So we take this off and turn around. These fibers running transversely so going across the inside layer. That is going to be your transverse abdominis. They're running right inside, right here. Transverse abdominis. They're gonna be the deepest layer of your abdominal wall. Their action, compress the abdominal contents. So the transverse abdominis is the deepest. The middle layer, which you can see a little bit right here, we made up of the internal oblique and the rectus abdominis and the external layer would be made up of the external oblique.